डॉक्टर अंजी रेड्डी कोलू फैकल्टी एज आर एन डी सेंट्रल कोऑर्डिनेटर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजिक्स पी वी आर आई टी हैदराबाद कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग फॉर वुमेन डॉक्टर अंजी रेड्डी कोलू हैज कम्पलीटेड हिज पी एच डी फ्रॉम डॉक्टर एच एस गोल्ड सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी एंड पोस्ट डॉक्टरल स्टडीज फ्रॉम सोगैन यूनिवर्सिटी साउथ कोरिया ही इज मोर देन थर्टीन ईयर्स ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस on battery materials and their application in electric vehicles dr reddy is currently working as faculty and r&d coordinator department of physics dvrit hyderabad college of engineering for women a premier engineering college in hyderabad previously dr reddy worked in vit university and kl university as assistant professor he has published more than 55 research papers in reputed journals and has been reviewed for many reputed journals ses rsc as well belay springer etc he has given many invited talks and a keynote lectures in various countries in reputed international conferences he received many awards and honors for his contribution to research on energy storage devices and academy dr reddy has three patents for his credit dr reddy has an appendix of 24 and more than 1900 citations dr reddy is also a lifetime member of the electrochemical society of india and visited 12 countries on behalf of shri vishnu vidyapeet vishwavidyalay we welcome you sir thank you ma'am thanks for the introduction we do sharing option this is sharing option welcome sir sir now the stage is on your yeah thank you very much ma'am yes sir you wish you yes uh, thank you for uh, your nice introduction you are able to see my screen ma'am yes sir visible yeah good morning one and all yeah from last 3 uh, days we are hearing various lectures related to renewable energy sources and uh, previously we uh, before yesterday i think uh, one lecture on uh, lithium batteries only but that is related to electrode materials okay. uh, today my focus is on particularly polymer electrolytes what are problems we are facing nowadays that is a uh, catch as fire issue okay now i am going to focus on that okay. for that what we need for that what we need that is we need to design some good polymer electrolytes that should be safe and high capacity that has to give safe and high capacity for rechargeable lithium batteries okay what is the progress of that polymer electrolytes and what are the challenges we are facing now that we will discuss okay actually if you observe in any lithium ion battery we are having three materials in any battery we are having three materials basic materials one is anode second one is cathode third one is electrolyte now in my today's talk i will focus more on the electrolyte material i will focus more on the electrolyte material and if you observe this tree these lithium ion batteries mainly useful for evs nowadays okay different applications are there no doubt but uh, evs there is one of the main important application when we are using this libs in evs what we have to check mainly the main point we need to check safety nowadays we are facing same problem okay in india we have we have seen lot of incidents firing issues okay recently before uh, i think before 10 days in hyderabad itself uh, due to blast of that uh, uh, electric vehicle battery 10 people died okay recently like that we have lot of issues so the safety is very very important for electric vehicle and second one is energy density that means high and reliability also reliability also okay these are the main things we need to discuss today and this is the lithium ion battery these are the three materials anode cathode this separator is nothing but my electrolyte material if you want to synthesize electrolyte material that is polymer electrolyte what are the materials we need okay now we are preparing for lithium ion battery in case of lithium ion batteries first we need the stable lithium salts first we need the stable lithium salts and electrolyte additives like polymers ionic liquids or some plasticizers non flammable solvents we have to use non flammable solvents by mixing all those things we will get the solid state electrolytes by mixing all those things we will get the solid state safer electrolytes okay now we will discuss about the safer electrolyte 
in today's session. So this is my out, uh, outline of my presentation. First, I will discuss about the introduction to different lithium batteries. We are having different types of lithium batteries, but commercially we are having only lithium ion batteries. But along with uh, in research stage, we are having lithium sulfur battery and lithium air battery also. Just I will introduce those uh, batteries also. What are the existing issues? What are the issues we are facing nowadays? Okay. What is the solution for that? For that, we have to design some new polymer electrolytes that should be safe and that will give high capacity. And here in the in my presentation, I will explain mainly about the ionic liquid or safer. Uh, safe plus size based polymer electrolytes. Some examples I have taken from my work and some other researchers work also I am going to explain here. And some fast based polymer electrolytes. I will explain these two type of, these two type of electrolytes. Uh, these two are uh, some of the safest uh, electrolytes. And finally, I will explain about the conclusion and the challenges. This is my outline, outline of today's presentation. First introduction. See everyone knows this, who are working on uh, battery devices. These are the three main people who got Nobel Prize in uh, 2019. Okay, in chemistry for their uh, tremendous work on lithium ion battery. Okay, these are the three main people. They got Nobel Prize for their tremendous work in lithium ion batteries. Okay, in 2019, they got. I'm not going to focus on much on this. See, introduction to batteries we observe. They are having two types of batteries. One is the primary battery, second one is the secondary battery. If you observe a primary battery, primary battery is just use and throw. That is not reversible. Okay. Whatever batteries we are using here, these primary batteries, these are just use and throw. So that is not reversible. Secondary batteries means those are reversible. Okay. This, that means we can charge and discharge. Example, our mobile batteries, laptop batteries, EV vehicle batteries. These are all secondary batteries. That means if the batteries are rechargeable, you can say secondary batteries. If the batteries are not rechargeable, those are primary batteries. These are two types. And if you talking about if you are talking about battery, what are the parameters we need to check? First one is capacity. Okay, for every battery, the capacity is very, very important. The capacity is nothing but that is the amount of charge the battery can supply. Okay, whatever battery we are manufacturing, how much charge that will supply? That is the capacity. Second one is specific energy. That is also measure of electric energy stored for every kilogram of battery mass. For every kilogram of battery mass. Generally, if you are using EV vehicles, generally they will give battery specifications 1 kilowatt, 2 kilowatt, 3 kilowatt, like that. That is per kg, how much electric energy is stored? That is specific energy and energy density, which is very, very important. And that is also that is also will give electric energy stored per cubic meter of the battery line. This is the per kilogram. Every kilogram, how much electric energy is stored? That is specific energy per cubic meter of battery volume. How much electric energy is stored? That will give energy density. And specific power, that is the amount of power obtained per kilogram of the battery. And energy efficiency. Okay, generally the energy efficiency will get more in the range 55 to 75 percent of the battery. And in every battery, we need to check state of charge. There is key parameter that indicates the residual capacity of the battery. Suppose 100 percent charge is the battery, we will get uh, in laptop that will get three hours backup time. If there is uh, decreasing from 100 to 50, then the uh, Time is also will decrease. Okay, that means there is called energy efficiency. How much time that will give? How much efficiency that battery is giving in different applications? Okay, that is the residual capacity for 50 percent. How many kilometers the vehicle will come? Uh, 30 percentage of charge. How much kilometer? How many kilometers we will get with that battery? Next, SOC is maintained always between 20 to 95 percent. This is very very important for any application. Even if you are working on laptop or mobile or EV vehicle. Okay. Better don't go beyond 20 and don't go beyond 95. Okay, less than 20 and more than 95, no need. Always we need to maintain 20 to 95 percent. Then automatically your battery will give more performance long long term. If you are always working with the 20 to 95 percent between these two, okay, automatically the battery will give more performance and the long term that will give. And the last one is depth of the discharge. That is the percentage of battery capacity to which the battery is discharged. Some batteries will discharge within one hour. Some batteries will give 24 hours. Okay, based on that time, that is called, that we can call depth of discharge. How much fast that is discharging? How much slow that is discharging? That we can call depth of discharge. These are the different parameters we are using in batteries. This is battery history already we know. Okay, what are I am going to explain? That is about lithium batteries. Lithium batteries started particularly as application point of view from 1990s by Sony company. First time Sony company 
used this lithium ion battery in 1990s. In 2008, first time lithium oxygen batteries are introduced, but commercially not available at present. There is a research state. And if you observe different types of batteries, present they are here. We are using the at present uh, from liquid electrolytes to solid state batteries. We are using these are the solid state batteries from 1800, okay, 1859, 1899, 8, uh, 1950, like that. Okay, from 1800 to at present and future, what type of batteries we are going to use and we, are, we have used. Okay, the complete uh, picture I have given here different types of batteries. In future, we will use flexible battery, grid scale battery, and the nano scale battery. Okay, in common, already those are on research stage. In future, maybe within two to three years, we will get the commercial we will, that will be commercialized also, flexible batteries. Okay, even some mobiles, folding mobiles, we are using flexible batteries nowadays. Okay, the battery is not flexible, but the device is flexible. The device is flexible here. In future, we will get batteries also flexible. Okay. These are the some of the batteries I have given here. And different batteries we will check. What are the different lithium batteries? First one is the lithium ion battery. Second one is the lithium sulfur battery. Third one is the lithium air battery based on their specific capacity and their energy density. Okay. Nowadays, uh, the, demand for, uh, uh, the, the demand for energy storage devices is very, very high. That means we need some advanced electronic equipment. Okay. We need some advanced electronic equipment that 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 give high energy density and high power density okay that device that will give high energy density and high power density for those devices nowadays there is huge demand uh, for that we are having at present lithium ion technology that lithium ion technology are currently the hope for meeting many of these demands particularly electric vehicles okay but in future demand this is also not enough demand. okay at present electric vehicles point of view it's okay but at present electric vehicles that give maximum range is 200 to 300. If you want the 500 range or 1000 range, it's not easy. For that, we need high energy density devices, high power density devices. Okay. At present, our hope is lithium ion only. And that lithium energy density of, uh, that energy density of lithium ion batteries, that is limited by intercalation chemistry of the electrons. Okay. That only I told you. Because if you need more range, that is more power density, more energy density. Okay. But that uh, energy density of lithium ion battery, that is limited by the intercalation chemistry of the electrons. If we are talking about electric vehicles, first we will remember Tesla. Okay, that is very popular uh, company, and uh, those are, uh, those vehicles also very popular. Tesla vehicles they are using lithium ion battery technology. Right. Second is the lithium sulfur batteries. This is also not yet commercialized. This is also in the research stage. The specific energy of this uh, lithium sulfur battery is around 450 watt hour per case. Okay. Compare with the lithium ion battery, this is good, no doubt. So if you compare with the lithium ion battery, you can check 150 to 260. Now it's around 270. Okay, 150 to 260 for lithium ion battery. Compare with this lithium ion battery specific energy. Okay, lithium sulfur battery having very high, that is 450. And energy density is also very high, 550. Okay, energy density is 550 and specific energy is 450. Okay, this is one of the very good batteries in future. And what is the disadvantage of this lithium sulfur battery? See, the structure is almost the same. The anode is the same. Lithium we are taking as the anode. The electrolyte example, you can take as the polymer electrolyte. But cathode material, the cathode material having some sulfur. Even electrolyte also, that needs sulfur. That's why we are calling lithium sulfur batteries. Particularly the cathode materials that uh, have that those are having sulfur material. See, this lithium sulfur batteries that will give up to 1500 charge discharge cycles. Even lithium also, those are giving. Okay, up to 1500 charge discharge cycles have been demonstrated, but cycle left test at commercial scale and with lean electrolyte are still needed. At present, whatever that is even lithium ion or lithium sulfur, we don't have better, uh, best electrolyte. We don't have it present. The main key issue of this lithium sulfur battery is that is the shuttle effect, that is polysulfide shuttle effect. That is main responsible for progressive leakage of the active material. Active material is electrolyte from the cathode resulting in low life uh, cycle of the battery. And due to this polysulfide shuttle effect, there is chance of leakage of that active material. This is one of the disadvantages of lithium sulfur. If you observe the specific energy, theoretically practical of different batteries from lead acid to lithium A. If you observe lithium ion, lithium uh, zinc and lithium A. So lithium A battery having more uh, specific uh, uh, specific energy. Okay, if you observe here, most of you can check the values. Under theoretical specific energy, including oxygen, under excluding oxygen. 
because uh, in between air gases, the cathode metal containing oxygen that is taking oxygen from the atmosphere, including oxygen, the specific energy is 5,000 to 100, and very, very high value, excluding our oxygen is around 11,000. Okay, whatever per case, these are very, very high values. But at a commercial stage, it will take time. For getting in commercial, that will take time. Okay, these are the different uh, specific energy values of inclusion oxygen and the excluding oxygen of different uh, metal air batteries. Okay. Uh, but in today's presentation, I will focus mainly on the lithium ion battery only. So this is the structure of a metal air battery, and this metal air battery having very high specific energy density, very high specific energy density. And here electrode material, one is anode, second one is cathode. That cathode is the air electrode. That cathode is the air electrode that is providing a battery with an inexhaustible cathode reactant. This is the cathode metal. This is the structure of lithium air battery. Okay, this lit why lithium air in future. Okay, that is having extremely high specific capacity compared to lithium ion or zinc air batteries or sodium air batteries. That lithium anode material that is having 3842. Okay, this is the value specific uh, specific capacity of the lithium anode material. And in the case of zinc, you can observe there is, there is huge difference compared to zinc and the lithium metals. There is huge difference in specific capacity. And the couple voltage of lithium oxygen in R plane electrolytes that is around 2.0, that is good one. Okay, not less. And in case of zinc air, there is 1.6. But this is theoretical. In practically, we are achieving up to 3000, 1000 to 3000 in lithium air battery, specific energy. And this lithium air cell is electrically rechargeable far more so than the zinc air battery. In future, we can expect this lithium air battery commercially. This is the structure of lithium ion battery, and this is the lithium air battery. Only change in cathode metal. Remaining everything is same, only change in cathode metal. This is, the, this, is, this is these are the structures of lithium ion and lithium ion. And mainly uh, we have to think about cost also. Whatever batteries we are having nowadays in India, okay, no company is doing research, uh, doing R and D on batteries. Maximum they are exporting batteries from other countries. So import. Okay, we are importing batteries from other countries, particularly China, Japan, South Korea. Okay, from different countries, India is importing the batteries. The reason is. Okay, the sources of lithium is very, very less in India. The sources of lithium is very, very less in India. But one of the good news is that was in 2021, July 19, in Karnataka, one place. Okay, they have found uh, some of the sources of lithium. Okay. From that source, we can extract 14,000 tons of lithium. Okay, it will take time. We extract the material and uh, clean that material that will take time. But this is one of the good news. If they extract this lithium material uh, from India, Indian sources, Okay, then automatically cost will reduce to 50 percent. If you observe any electric vehicle, the 50 percent of cost share, okay, that is per battery only. We have to reduce the cost also. Along with the safety, we have to reduce the cost, right? If you observe the lithium ion battery packs, okay, how the energy density increases from 2008 to 2020. In 2008, when at that time when we are using the lithium batteries, the energy density is very less, 55 only. But if with the time is goes on. And 2020, that increases to 450. That is very, very high. Okay. But at present application point of view, we need more. At present application point of view, we need more energy density. But 450 is also good for electric vehicles. And what are the global EV battery usage in 2021? Particularly, the main company is CATL. Those are making more. Okay. EV batteries. Okay. These are the different companies making uh, batteries. Particularly, CATL is one of the leading companies in the world. That, those, that company is making uh, uh, huge uh, percentages of batteries. In second, one, uh, second one is LG. Okay, these two almost shared more than 50 percent. These two companies were all shared, uh, that is shared by more than 50 percent. Remaining other companies, the share is less than 50 percent. Remaining all companies. Okay. And this is the global lithium ion battery uh, recycling market in 2022 2042 in different applications. At present, mainly we are using two wheeler and four wheeler. We are using particularly in two wheeler and four wheeler. In some places, uh, vehicles also there, trucks, uh, buses also there. And in future, we will get heavy vehicles also. In future, we will get heavy vehicles also. This is the prediction. These are the different broad applications of lithium batteries. We can use in many applications. We can use in many applications. How the uh, battery is charged? Just you can check the phenomena here. How the battery is charged? The ions are moving from cathode to anode material. This is charge. When the battery is charging, means the charges are moving from 
cathode to anode metal here. In case of discharge, that is exactly this. In case of discharge, the electrons are moving from anode to cathode metal. This is the charge discharge phenomenon. This is the charge discharge phenomenon. Now, what are the existing issues? What are the issues we are facing? Okay, in the real market. Particularly the energy density and power density, those are both. Okay, those are not met at our requirements. Okay, those values are low. Even we are having energy density up to 450, but at present requirement, the value is low. Okay, those are two low values. And the lifetime, lifetime is also very, very important. That remains a long shot, particularly temperature range. Okay, operating temperature range. Whatever that is, we are using that operating temperature range, particularly minus 20 to 55, those are safe. If you are using those batteries, particularly in between minus 20 to 55, those are safe. But we need to increase that uh, operating temperature in between minus 55 to 80. Because some countries like Russia, in Russia, some regions, the temperature is uh, um, less than minus 50. Even uh, some other continents, we are having temperature less than 50. In some places, the temperature is more than 50. That means we need to increase the operating temperature range. That is minus 55 to 80. That is good. That range. And one of the very, very important thing is safety. Safety means whatever electrolytes we are using, whatever electrolytes we are using, due to that electrolytes, we are getting safety issue, particularly flammability, sensitivity to charging, variability, liquids, uh, leakage of liquids, okay, sensitivity to deformations. Safety issue will focus more. Okay, safety is very, very important for every battery. And the cost wise also, whatever we are importing the batteries from other countries, the cost is very, very high. Okay, that also we have to think. These are the, some of the issues at present we are facing. Some of the incidents happen. Okay, these are the old incidents. These are the old incidents. One flight of fire catches from the battery. Then in car also, the battery you know, catches fire. This is one laptop catches fire. Recent issues. This is already, we know, 27th March 2022. This is Wola Bar. Okay, this uh, battery catches fire. This is Wola. And some of the issues. This is a Fury. And different companies are there like that. I am not going to mention their names. But different companies also there. Okay, recently we have seen almost every week uh, incidents are happening. Okay, the battery catches fire in EVs. Some people also die. That means safety is very, very important. Safety is very, very important. These are some of the incidents happen in India, particularly. Okay. Now, here, where, where is the failure? Okay, here in any electro uh, any battery, we are having the, these are the three materials cathode, anode, and electrolyte. Okay, and the current connection is also good. We need to focus mainly on the electrolyte because in cathode and anode meters, we have best material. In cathode point of view and anode point of view, we are having best material, safe materials we have. But electrolyte point of view, we don't have safe material. Okay, now we need to focus on okay? how can we make safe materials, safe electrolyte materials, right? See, when it comes to the safety issue of lithium ion batteries, it is widely considered to be closely related, related to internal components, including cathode material, anode material, and electrolyte. Okay, along with we are having a separator under other electronic devices. Along we are having better cathode materials and anode materials, particularly the cathode materials at present we are using uh, lithium cobalt oxide, lithium nickel oxide, these are different cathode materials. And particularly LFD batteries, the various we are using. Okay, we are saying compared to uh, lithium cobalt oxide battery, uh, lithium uh, Ferrous actor, okay. LIF, the LFP batteries we can see. LIFE PO4. Okay, these are the some of the safe batteries compared with the lithium cobalt oxide. But the problem is size. Okay, lithium, iron, ferrophosphate. Okay, these LI, LFP batteries having a huge size compared with the lithium cobalt oxide. But from safe compared with the lithium cobalt oxide batteries. These are the different cathode materials we are using. There is some better cathode materials we have. And in case of the anode materials, also we are having some better anode materials. Particularly, we need to focus on the electrolyte and we need to focus this solid electrolyte interface also. Okay, how the uh, interaction between that electrolyte and the anode material. Okay. All the high capacity electrode materials like silicon anode and high nickel temporary cathode we have well developed and put into commercial production also. But there is still no major breakthrough in the electrolyte area. Are, is far from practical application. Okay, but we are having very good uh, anode and cathode material. But uh, safety point of view, we don't have breakthrough in electrolyte material. We are having still uh, safety issue. Even capacity is good, but safety issue is still there. Right? See the basic phenomena. See this is our battery, cathode material. 
anode material. Okay, this is the between electrolyte and anode solid electrolyte interface. This is the separator between the electrolyte and electrolyte. Okay, this is our batch. Now we will check the temperature. If the temperature increases from room temperature to high temperature, what will happen? Say up to 69 degrees centigrade. No, okay, no problem. Okay, heat will produce. Okay, not that much problem. If the temperature is more than 69, then more heat will produce. Then that will catch us the fire. Okay, up to 60, whatever batteries we are using, up to 16 degrees, okay, heat will produce, but not, not that much problem. If the batteries are heated more than 69 degrees, okay, then automatically we will get issues. Okay, first one, 69 to 100, main heat production is there. From 100 to 130, internal short circuit will happen. 130 to 200, okay, HF and PF5, these are three radicals HF will release, and 200 to 300, oxygen will release. Then automatically that will fire. Automatically, the battery will fire. Okay. For that, we need the we need to extend the operational temperature range. We need to extend the operational temperature range. Okay. This is the main phenomenon. The main reason behind this, whatever electrolyte we are using, the most flammable component of lithium-ion battery that is commercial organic electrolyte that consisting of carbonate solvent with the low boiling point under LiPF6, lithium hexafluoroplastic. Has been used for decades since the invention of lithium ion battery. Okay, still we are using that only, particularly in commercial batteries. Maximum we are using this uh, liquid electrolyte. Okay, nowadays uh, some companies are trying to incorporate the solid state uh, electrolytes in batteries. Okay, and the main reason for the thermal instability of the traditional non aqueous electrolyte is the thermal decomposition of that lithium salt and the high flammable solvents. That means we need to use low flammable solvents. And stable lithium salts. This is the main replacement we have to do. Okay, stable lithium salts we have to use under non flammable solvents we have to do. Okay, that means thermal runway will be easily triggered when heat generation rate of lithium ion battery is significantly larger than the heat dissipation rate. That means thermal decomposition could occur beyond 69. Up to 69, no problem. But beyond 69, what will happen? Series of self accelerating exothermic reactions take place. Then automatically that catches the fire. This is the thermal runway stages of the lithium ion battery. Right? And among these reactions, including solid electrolyte interface will be the position, electrolyte oxidation, cathode and anode breakdown, and their interactive reactions. Electrolyte is almost involved in every reaction, increasing the reaction heat and advancing the reaction temperature. That means that means we need to focus on the electrolyte, need more focus. That means electrolyte because in every stage of reactions, electrolyte is involved. Therefore, it can be considered that the flammable electrolyte is the key factor affecting thermal stability of the whole lithium ion battery system. Because they're having a better anode and cathode material, we don't have breakthrough electrolytes. Okay, that is main uh, for that means the place key factor for safety. Technological innovation in the electrolyte aspect is a necessary step for developing the next generation of safe lithium ion batteries. Right. Now, how to improve that electrolyte safety? How to improve that electrolyte safety? See here, same diagram, whatever I explained in the starting slide. Okay, we need to use more stable lithium salt. In place of LiPF6 or LiPF4, we need to use more uh, stable lithium salt. And we have to use Lewis based stabilizers additives and adding electrolyte retardant and overcharge additives, adopting non flammable electrolyte solvents and synthesizing polymer under solid state electrolytes. Okay. These are the some of the ways to improve the electrolyte safety. Okay. So we'll check one by one. See. For that, what is the alternative? That is the polymer electrolyte. Okay, that is the polymer electrolyte. In polymer electrolytes, we are having different. First of all, what is the meaning of the polymer electrolyte? In every polymer electrolyte, we are having the polymer, salt, and the solvent. These are the three things. In every polymer electrolyte, we are having the polymer. Lithium salt or whatever battery. So, the example sodium battery, we can take sodium salt. If it is zinc battery, we can take zinc salt. That means in any polymer alcohol, we are having the polymer salt and the solvent. And these are the very, very important parameters, the important characterizations. Whatever polymer alcohol we are synthesizing, ionic conductance should be very good and the transference number should be very good. But particularly, we need cation transfer, cationic transference number. And that needs very good thermal and mechanical stability. And that has to improve the safety. Okay, compared to the liquid electrolytes, polymer electrolytes, the safety is very good, no doubt at all. And environmental friendly, that material should be environmental friendly. Okay, this is battery. 
in case of this polymer electrolytes they are having different types of polymer electrolytes one is solid polymer electrolyte second one is gel polymer electrolyte third one is composite polymer electrolytes these we are using high voltage lithium ion batteries we can use these polymer electrolytes we can use smart lithium ion batteries lithium metal batteries lithium oxygen batteries lithium sulfur batteries and flexible lithium ion batteries in future we already in future we will get these lithium oxygen and lithium sulfur those are having very good high energy density in case of the polymer electrolytes okay we are having different electrolytes one is the liquid electrolyte and second one is the inorganic solid electrolyte okay alternate of these two is the polymer electrolyte polymer electrolytes okay in liquid electrolyte what is the main advantage and what are the main disadvantages advantage is energy density is very good no doubt and excellent rate capability for the liquid electrolytes but the problem is stability and flame. if you are using liquid electrolyte there is more chances of flammability and the leakage problem if you are using inorganic solid electrolyte okay good thing is safety is very good because this solid electrolyte safety is very good but problem is cyclic performance okay there is not giving cyclic performance and interface is also unstable okay. for replacing this what is the alternative that is the polymer in polymer electrolyte here i am dividing into two types one is the solid polymer electrolyte second one is the gel polymer electrolyte. if we use gel polymer electrolyte what is the problem and what are the advantages advantages are flexibility is there multi function is there chemical stability is also good problem is poor mechanical properties even conductivity is also very good gel polymer electrolytes have been very good conductivity of the tensor minus 3 rd but uh, mechanical properties not that much but in case of solid polymer electrolytes okay flexibility is good multi functionality is there mechanical properties also good thermal and chemical stability is also good problem is ionic if you choose these two in case of gel polymer electrolyte we have to improve the mechanical stability in case of solid polymer electrolyte we have to improve the ionic conductivity that we need to focus okay both are very good no doubt okay here problem is mechanical stability here problem is ionic conductivity that is what we have to do in case of gel polymer electrolyte we have to increase the mechanical stability in case of solid polymer electrolyte we have to improve the conductivity if we do those things then that is one of the safest material for lithium ion and performance wise also that will do high performance so if we use liquid electrolyte the conductivity is very good no doubt the conductivity is very good but the problems are more what are those internal short circuits will happen leakage of liquid electrolyte is there corrosion reactions will happen at anode and cathode combustion reaction due to that we are getting the fire okay lot of these advantages are advantages are the no doubt electrolyte performance is very high conductivity is good and anode stability is also very good but lot of disadvantages the alternate of those is solid polymer electrolyte actually here i am going to focus on main polymer that is pe polyethylene acid that is having lot of advantages okay the polymer is electro donor polymer and that is having low gen sufficient donor ability for complexation and sufficient distance between the sides and there is amorphous in nature polyether good candidates polyethylene acid is there is one of the polyether that is a good, a good candidate for polymer electrolyte and it is the point of view also is less but that is flexible below the see this is the structure of this pgo okay this pgo easily uh, take the uh, ions like lithium and sodium okay large variety of salts can be dissolved in pgo that means pgo is nothing but matrix in that matrix lithium and sodium easily those can move okay compared to sodium lithium uh, that can move easily because the size is less compared to sodium lithium size is less sodium size is around three times more than lithium okay then it's difficult to move okay conductivity point of view you can check lithium is good no doubt at all okay but safety issue is there with the lithium and what are the some uh, other advantages for uh, solid polymer electrolytes that is safer stability thermal that is very good light in weight easy handling flexible and wider electrochemical stability these are the main advantages of solid polymer electrolytes but when we have to use the solid polymer electrolyte in lithium ion battery what are the main requirements the conductivity should be minimum 10 to the power of minus 4 practical use okay if it is minus 2 to minus 3 that is very good no no problem that is very that is ideal condition but for practical use we need 10 to the power of minus 4 and electrochemical stability in a voltage window that should be compatible with chemically and electrochemically compatible with the electrodes thermal stability see every electrolyte that needs any conductivity should be very good electrochemical uh, stability is also very very important mechanical stability and thermal stability these are very very important mechanical thermal electrical and electrochemical 
these four properties are very very important for every electrolyte and one more important thing is availability and cost wise if there is inexpensive that is good for the market okay these are the main requirements for electrolyte solid polymer then how can we increase that conductivity how can we increase that conductivity by using different methods we can increase conductivity by using different method one of the method i am going to choose here ionic liquids let's now liquid plus stages okay example we can take ionic liquid and the compounds with hybrid nano compounds not nano particles or nano pillar hybrid nano compounds this is very good thing i will do okay in place of uh, nano pillars or nano particles hybrid nano compounds will increase uh, different properties of polymer electrolytes okay in my uh, work actually mainly i choose some stable uh, lithium salts okay already i discussed initially lipf6 we are using commercially in lot of lithium ion batteries okay okay lipf6 that is not that much stable lithium salt now we need the stable lithium salt okay here i have chosen two lithium salts one is lidfov second one is litdl okay lidfov means lithium difluoroxalate of borate okay we have published more than five papers on this salt okay this lidfov that will be having the mixed properties of okay combining properties of lidfov and lidbov these are these two are good salts no doubt but this lidfov will give okay the properties related to lidfov and lidbov the both properties having this lidfov this is one of the main advantage okay the salt possesses the combined advantages of lidfov and the lidfov that is the main reason that is one of the main reason to choose lidfov compared with lidbov lidfov has higher solubility in carbonate solvents and that is also having the very good thermal and hydrolytic stability okay due to those reasons i have chosen lidfov for my work okay and the second salt is lidtd this is very good good salt okay this was first uh, invented in uh, uh, 2004 and very few papers are available okay from our group we have published more than four or five papers on lidtd salt okay this lidtd salt is thermally stable up to 250 degrees centigrade there is far more than boiling point of any solvent or stability of many other organic lithium salts okay and uh, that uh, anodic stability is also very good that is around 4.8 okay this is having lot of uh, advantages for this lithium salt lidtd right and uh, ionic liquids okay this is uh, one of the very good material to improve the conductivity and electrochemical stability of the polymer electrolyte okay particularly room temperature molten salt we can call ionic liquids are room temperature molten salts in every ionic liquid we are having the anion and cation those are having the anion and cation okay ionic liquids which function at room temperature the most desirable operational temperature range are termed room temperature ionic liquids okay these ionic liquids in terms of conductivity hydrophobicity melting point viscosity solubility etc can be varied by all in the substitute group on the cation or the carbine only what are the cation and anions see you can check here these are the cations some of the cations i have given some of the anions i have given here in ionic liquid we are having two types hydrophobic and hydrophilic that means uh, some are uh, dissolving in water some are not dissolving in water those are dissolving in organic solvents okay based on that we are dividing into polar and non polar that we can call hydrophobic and hydrophilic these are two types of the ionic liquids right these are number of advantages of ionic liquids okay non toxic in nature also in terms of being the good non flammable non volatile plastic in effect is like high ion content superior electrochemical stability excellent thermal stability the advantages then what is the disadvantage the disadvantage already i told initially that is decrease the mechanical properties that will decrease the mechanical property of electrolyte material that is one of the disadvantages okay on the uh, for that purpose we have chosen some new ionic liquids those ionic liquids will increase the mechanical stability and the conductivity simultaneously okay that is the new trend okay we have to increase conductivity and mechanical stability simultaneously for that we need some different ionic liquids okay. those we can call nano ionic liquids i will discuss that also one or two minutes okay this is one of my work that is a publication uh, journal of interest journal of hydrogen energy here uh, what i use lidfov this is one of the stable lithium salt and this is one of the non flammable plastic okay emi am clear okay by using that the conductivity we have achieved up to temperature of minus 4 order that 30 degree centigrade okay for practical usage at room temperature we need conductivity at the order of temperature of minus 4 if the conductivity is temperature of minus 4 order at room temperature we can use commercial gas practical use that is good right 
See, if you increase the IL content up to 40%, the film is stable. Okay, if you increase the IL content more than 40, the mechanical property will reduce drastically. That's why we have not done uh, after 40% of IL. Okay, up to up to 48% of the finite liquid in this PU LIDFOB, the conductivity is good, and even mechanically that is good, not that much degrade. Mechanically, that is also good up to 48%. Okay, the conductivity we have achieved at uh, uh, 23 degrees centigrade, 9.44 into 10 to the minus 5. At 30 degrees centigrade, uh, we reach 10 to the of minus 4. Here I have compared this work with the another work with the LITF test. Same polymer, whatever I use, the same polymer I use. Okay, in this work, whatever polymer and ionic liquid they use, same I have used, but I changed it with lithium salt. In this work, they use LITF acid, I use it LITF. We have achieved the very good conductivity compared with this one. Okay, see at 40 degrees centigrade, they reach highest conductivity 2.88 into 10 to the power of minus 5 at 40 degrees centigrade. At the 30 degrees centigrade itself, we have achieved 1.85 into 10 to the power of minus 4 at when, uh, when they are using LIDF. Okay, this is one of the very good uh, stable lithium salt, LIDF. Okay, this is the PO LIDF assay images. You can observe how the MR first nature increases. Okay, how the MR first nature increases. Right? Next, DSC pointer. Okay, DSC, how the MR first nature increases after adding uh, lithium salt or ionic liquid. So, this is pure PU, this is the uh, adding lithium salt, this is adding lithium salt and the ionic liquid. How the TG value changes, you can observe. How the MR first nature increases, you can observe. See, this is MR first nature is more, this more crystallinity. If you uh, add the lithium salt, the crystalline nature decreases. If you add uh, ionic liquid, the crystalline nature more decreases. Okay, if you compare with the pure PU, the crystalline nature we can take as 100%. Okay, the crystallinity that is reduced up to 45.7% after adding lithium salt, after adding ionic liquid 48%. That is decreased to 13.2 percent. That means, uh, if the, if we increase the amount of pressure, the conductivity will increase, no doubt. Okay, that I am comparing with the same uh, same work. Whatever conductivity I compare. Okay, here also the conductivity they reduced up to 19.17.06 uh, is minimum. Right? And uh, finally, we can compare battery performance. We can compare battery performance in every battery. The specific capacity that is very very important. The specific capacity very very important uh, particularly lithium ion batteries we are having at present 150 to 270 like that in the range of 150 to 270 for practical use okay if we observe here by using LITF assay you can observe what is the specific capacity it's around 135 like that it's around 135 at the C rate of 0 0.05 okay I uh, tested my battery at 0 0.1 C rate Okay, after adding ionic liquid, how much uh, specific capacity you choose? Almost it's around 157 actually, the blood value is around 157. Okay, compared with LIDF assay, even battery performance wise also, LIDF will be uh, stable cells are very good. Okay, the capacity we are reaching almost 160. Okay, the specific capacity almost we are reaching here, 160. Practically, practical usage point of view, that is good, 160 is enough. But practical usage point of view in uh, EV vehicles, small vehicles. Right, and if you observe the specific capacity and cycle number, we tested up to 50 cycles. The stability is good. Okay, if uh, starting we are achieving, we are getting here around 160. If you decrease the, uh, and if you increase the number of cycles, the specific capacity reduces. But up to 50 cycles we tested, there is not that much reduced. That is not that much reduced. If you check here, uh, initially we are having around 160. After 50 cycles, it's around 145. It's around 145. That is good. Thing. Specific capacity not that much reduced. And LITDA cells, that also we have studied with the EM, uh, uh, ionic liquid and the plus size the saxonitrile and in nanoparticle TA. Okay. So we compare all these two, which one is good. This is our synthesis mechanism. Okay, this is PU and lithium cell. Both we can dissolve in acetonitrile and stir for 12 hours at 50 degrees centigrade. Okay, after uh, getting homogeneous solution, we have to add a TAO to nanoparticle or saxonitrile plus size or EMIM TFSA ionic liquid. Okay. Again, we have to stir. Again, we have to stir up to 12 hours at 50 degrees centigrade. Whatever the film you are seeing here, this is with the TAO. Okay. This polymer is with the TAO. Right. So if you observe the this is ionic liquid content increases, how the conductivity increases. Here, saxonitrile content increases, how the conductivity increases. All are at a 23 degrees centigrade. Whatever conductivity I have mentioned here, 
all are at 23 degree centigrade we study and this is the tio2 content see by adding this ionic liquid at room temperature 23 degree centigrade we achieve conductivity 10 to the power of minus 5 watt 6.37 into 10 to the power of minus 5 and with the succinyl nitrile we achieve this conductivity at 23 degree centigrade and uh, with the tio2 we got this with the tio2 we got this and with the tio2 we study the mechanical stability also with the tio2 we have studied mechanical stability and with the zero percentage of TA, tio2 com compared with zero percent of zero uh, weight percent of tio2 eight weight percent of tio2 having more mechanical stability okay that is having more mechanical stability that is by increasing the uh, concentration of tio2 we can increase the mechanical stability and conductivity but the problem is if you add more weight percent of tio2 again that will decrease the conductivity you can observe here the trend you can observe here up to 048 weight percentage the conductivity increased after that the conductivity decreased that is main drawback in nano particles but here you can observe if you are adding this ir content the conductivity continuously increases even succinyl nitrile plus is also the conductivity continuously increases right and this is the uh, battery test that only first charge discharge cycle i have studied for lite dia and ionic liquid 48 percent is of ionic liquid see here also we have achieved around more than 160 okay here here also we are we have achieved around more, more than 160 it's around 163 or 164 like that we achieved the value water specific capacity we achieved here that is this is at room temperature okay whatever cyclic performance we are observing here this is at room temperature and with the lite dia salt okay after adding ionic liquid 48 percent So the specific capacity we achieved more than 160. That is good value for practical use. These are two main uh, lithium salts we use for our. Work. This is one more paper. That is not. This is not our paper. This is uh, Dylan Cashler. They prepared some safe electrolyte materials. Okay. Here in this paper, uh, they have uh, prepared coin cell and pouch cell both. by using their electrolyte material gel electrolyte gel polymer electrolyte material they made both the cells one is coin cell and second one is the pouch cell coin cell area is around 1.33 cm square and pouch cell area 20 cm square okay this is the two types of cells they made by using this gel polymer how they synthesized that one? for that they use a polymer which polymer they use we can check okay that is the pvdf hf the polymer they use in this uh, Gel polymer electrolyte that is PVDF HFP and the plasticizer they use PZDME that is one of the highly safe polyethylene glycol dimethyl ether. This is the plasticizer. This is one of the highly safe plasticizer PZDME and the polymer is the PVDF HFP and the lithium salt they use. Okay, okay, lithium salt also they use. Okay. And what is the lithium salt we use? This they used the LITF acid. This is the synthesis phenomena. They use this is the polymer structure PVDF HFP. This is the highly safe plasticizer PZDME, and this is the one of the stable lithium salt that is LITF. Okay, these three are added in the stone, and they synthesize the polymer electrolyte. This is their film. Okay, that is very transparent. That looks like transparent, and that looks good mechanically. That is looking good mechanical stability also. That is looking. Good. This is one of this is the polymer electrolyte they synthesized by using this three metal. If we observe the thermal stability, if we check here thermal stability, fifty eight percent is of uh, this plasticizer. Okay, how we are getting? See this black color one is the thermal stability of the pure polymer PVDF HFP. And if you observe pure plasticizer, that is this one last one. And if we are adding the this plasticizer content, okay, and that means we can increase the plasticizer content. How the thermal stability increases? How the thermal stability increases almost up to 250. That is very good thermal stability. That is having very good thermal stability. 250 is very good. The temperature 250 to 300. That is very good thermal stability for polymer alkynes. Okay. This is the adding of the uh, plasticizer PZ DM. That is one of the safest plasticizer. Right. Ionic conductivity. How the ionic conductivity increases? Okay. This we can observe the ionic conductivity values. It tends to be of minus four R. This is without polymer PEZ DME. Okay, PEZ DME with the lithium salt without polymer. How much they got? The conductivity is very good. Okay, and with the different concentrations of PEZ DME with the polymer, how the conductivity changes? And this is also very good. This is also kind of minus four R. Okay, this polymer film water polymer electrolyte film water we are observing here. There is also having the very good conductivity. Right? 
and they did flammability test also this is one of the important test and it is okay uh, the, uh, they tested with uh, different class sizes with ec emc gel polymer alkaloid and pez dme gel polymer alkaloid they tested these two particularly okay this they after firing okay after flame retardant testing see after firing how this is looking like see one black spot okay not that much fire retardant but pez dme we are saying this is highly safe class size see that is very good after flammability test okay after flammability test also this pez dme that is very good but uh, this ec emc that is not that much good after firing test for okay, flammability test that is whatever formal alkaloid they synthesize here that is safe and uh, one of the good material right and they check the kinds and these are the kind cell battery performance and they achieved uh, the maximum capacity that is around one around 150 okay 150 is also good okay 150 they achieved here okay and the capacity this is different series these are the different series this is these are for kind cells not pouch cells these are for kind cells not pouch pouch cells they achieved the specific capacity generally lithium and that is uh, for, for practical uses 152 270 that is good one okay this is one this one is around 150 is practically is good okay that different series they observed even at uh, 20 series also they got good okay 20 series also they got good capacity here also at 20 series they got good capacity okay. different uh, materials they use you see what is a and what is b and what is check it again battery testing performance and charge discharge performance of the gel polymer alkaloid 20% different series okay and back to see then using nmc Okay, whatever these are the cathode metals they have changed. Okay, okay. In first case they use the NMC cathode material. In second case LFB. We can say this is the NMC batteries. These are the LFB batteries. Okay. Now, whereas those are some of the safest batteries compared to lithium ion. Compared to lithium ion, that is lithium cobalt oxide. These two are some safest batteries. NMC and the LFB batteries. Right? That is different series they use. Okay. Electrolyte material is same. They change the cathode material. In first case they use the NMC. In second case they use the LFP. In both cases the capacity is good. That is different series. The capacity is good. And Coulomb coefficient we observe. See this is also very very good. Coulomb coefficient you can observe this black color line. Okay. Up to 60 cycles they check. This one is up to 50 cycles. The Coulomb coefficient is also very good. The Coulomb coefficient is also. Good. And they check it with the different LED lamps. Okay, these are four. This is the pouch cells, not uh, kind cells. See these diagrams for kind cells with different electrode material, cathode material. These are uh, pouch cells. These are pouch cells. You can observe. This is pouch cell. This is bending. How much angle? Ninety degrees. See, this is a flat one, completely. Okay, around the twenty centimeters square area. Okay, this is the bended. Half of the pouch cell is bended at ninety degrees. Okay, this is one eighty degrees, completely uh, folded. And this is cutting. Okay, cutting. Okay, in four cases, see, twenty LED lamps under both normal and different bending condition. Most strikingly, the pouch cell is still able to keep the LED lamps, and even after being cut in half, see, you can observe here, this is cut in half. Even that case also, the LED is glowing, as shown in Figure Two, and without any liquid leakage, smoke or flame. Okay, that means those are safe. These uh, tests further prove the excellent safety of the. Developer gel polymer alkaloid and its potential application in large scale lithium metal batteries. Okay, this is one. Okay, this pouch cell Coulomb coefficient is good. And if you observe the specific capacity, that's also around one fifty. That's also around one fifty. Okay, that is good. Okay, that is well if you observe safety point of view, that is good. Right. Yeah. If for this uh, uh, ionic liquid, what is the problem? Okay, what are large sizes or ionic liquids they are adding? What is the problem? That means the mechanical properties reduces. Okay, that is decreasing the mechanical property and increasing the conductivity. Decreasing the mechanical property and increasing the conductivity, right? But how can we increase both? That only I am going to explain next to ten minutes. Okay, how can we increase the both ionic conductivity and mechanical property? For that, what we choose? That is pass. Okay, this is our main material. What I am working from last six years. Okay. On fast-based materials, we are working. These fast-based materials will increase the conductivity and mechanical stability simultaneously. But what is the meaning of fast? That is polyhedral oligomeric silicic resin. That is organic, inorganic hybrid nanomaterial. Okay, this is the structure of fast. If you observe, inside core we are having the inorganic structure. Outside core we are having the organic structure. 
okay and we observe this silicon oxygen bond inside what are the inorganic structure they are having that silicon oxygen bond is stronger than silicon hydrogen bond and much more than the silicon silicon bond okay this is the inside structure of cross and this is the outside structure of cross material okay this we can use as a polymer or ecm salt or nano ionic liquid or some plasticizer by using this basic cross material we can synthesize anything okay here what we synthesized previously in my lab in my post doctoral studies and after that what we synthesized these are different applications this cross material we can use as electrolytes in different energy devices and that we can use as a thin film solar cell functional coating and other applications also there for cross right so this is one of the cross lithium salt we synthesized in our lab okay actually this is also cross synthesized cross uh, lithium salt this is available commercially okay this cross lithium salt commercially uh, available commercially so we purchased this cross uh, lithium salt we tested conductivity the conductivity is not good the conductivity we achieved around 10 to the minus 7 atom with pu with pu polymer this commercialized cross lithium salt we got conductivity 10 to the minus 7 atom then we have changed that one okay this li is replaced by bf3 li li is replaced by bf3 li by after synthesizing this salt after synthesizing this cross lithium we synthesized this cross uh, lithium salt in our lab and with this salt we achieved conductivity minus 4 or the at room temperature itself without adding any plasticizer without adding any plasticizer by using this cross lithium salt with pu we achieved conductivity minus 4 or the with good mechanical stability okay the electron withdrawing cross phase and the bf3 groups enable easy dissociation of li plus that's why we replaced li by bf3 li soluble in polar solvents indicating enhanced dissociation of the lithium ion okay. this lithium salt we synthesized and we synthesized some phosphorescent polymers example phospegs we can use this phospegs as a polymer or uh, plasticizer but you see here this is the first step of the phospegs synthesis this monomethyl polyethylene oxide this is available, available in market and that is reacted with allyl bromide first we have synthesized allyl pvo with the different chain lengths okay based on chain length we can use as a plasticizer or polymer and this allyl pvo reacts with octacylene pass this is the octacylene pass that octacylene pass reacts with this allyl pvo and we will get the pass pvo okay this pass pvo if we add as a plasticizer with uh, low chain lengths that will increase the conductivity and mechanical property uh, very good okay that increases both and nano ionic liquids this is our main focus today okay already some of the literature is available okay already few researchers they synthesized different uh, ionic liquids this is not this is one of the research group synthesized ionic liquid this is ionic liquid grafted pass okay this is one of the ionic liquid and this is our group synthesized okay whatever scheme i have given this is our uh, our group synthesized and we patented this this one and first we have synthesized this one okay this is one of the basic kinetic liquid by using this basic kinetic liquid we synthesized different types of ionic liquid by changing the by changing the ion by changing the anions okay this uh, iodine anion we can replace it by tfsa libfo b tdi all these three we synthesized okay and this ionic liquids we use in our polymer electrolytes that will increase conductivity and mechanical stability both that will increase both simultaneously okay this is very we can say nano ionic liquids okay the name itself is different generally we can call ionic liquids but here we can call nano ionic liquids why we are calling nano inside structure that is nano okay whatever bonds we are having the silicon silicon inorganic structures that is nano inside okay i have given the name also we can say See, that is the smallest possible particles of silicon. Fast nanostructures having diameters ranging from one to three nanometers. That's why we are calling nano always. This is, right? this is nano. And by using those things, we synthesize the polymer electrolytes. Okay, PVO, fast lithium salt. And by adding fast PG chain length four, okay, you can observe the film. How that is good. Okay, how the film is good. You can observe. After adding this plasticizer, okay, fast PG hydrogen nanoparticle, the film strength is very good. the film strength is very good and if you observe the conductivity okay this is only with the pe one cross lithium salt we have not added anything here at room temperature itself we can we achieve my density of minus 4 order the conductivity is very good okay even with the different uli ratio we got maximum conductivity uli ratio at 14 the conductivity at 24 degrees the conductivity is good 
and uh, after synthesizing that uh, pass lithium salt we tested with the ftir okay and uh, without to uh, change uh, this first one this red color is the whatever commercialized whatever purchased from market pass lithium salt this is our our synthesizing one this is our synthesizing one. this is the xrd graph see these are the two peaks in pure peo but after adding that pass lithium salt almost that looks like uh, there is a uh, disappearance of this peo peaks no PEO crystalline peaks are absorbed here. Okay, that means that crystalline thing reduces here maximum. And the BSC studies also see this is crystalline nature is high for PEO after adding the fast lithium salt, how that is reduces for different UI ratios. Red one is the uh, 14, and the blue one is the UI ratio 10. UN you can observe thermal stability up to 200 degrees centigrade, only 5 percent weight loss. Okay, up to 200 degrees centigrade, the weight loss is only 5 percent. So this thermally also is stable, right? This is after adding fast PEG. This is after adding fast PEG. See, without fast PEG, we have a two minus four R. Uh, okay, that is one point something. That's twenty four degrees. After adding fast PEG, the conductivity increases to more ten to the power of uh, seven point six four into ten to the power of minus four. Okay, that you will have ratio fourteen. That's a party weight problem. So this, these are the impedance plots, pole pole plots. How the conductivity increases uh, after adding fast PEG content, and you can observe the mechanical stability. Okay, without fast PEG and with fast PEG, how the mechanical stability increases. Okay. This is the uh, extra studies after adding fast PEG, and uh, whatever uh, peaks we are observing here, that is fast lithium salt peaks. These are fast lithium salt peaks, and mechanical stability is also good after adding the fast PEG. Right. So this, uh, we studied a flame retardant test also. This is original one. This is the ignited, and uh, this is extinguished. Okay. Even uh, flammable, this uh, flammability test. Okay, that means fire uh, fire point of view also. This is safe, okay. non-flammable. Okay, this electrolyte material. This is non-flammable. And battery testing we observe. See, almost we achieved after adding fast PEG. Okay, after adding fast PEG, the fast PEG, it's around one ninety. This already we patented. Okay, this 190, this is already we patented. We got very good uh, specific capacity after adding fast PEG. Without fast PEG, only with the lithium salt, that is around 160 or like that. That is also a good thing. Okay, after adding fast PEG, that is more good. Okay, even if you have the specific capacity with the different sizes, how that is changing. Okay, see if you observe, I have been three. One is liquid electrolyte. What is that liquid electrolyte? I have taken LAPF6 with the one is to one ECDMC. Okay, this is liquid electrolyte. I have compared my electrolyte, volume electrolyte, with the liquid electrolyte. Okay, compared with the liquid electrolyte, whatever electrolytes we synthesize. Okay, whatever electrolytes we synthesize. This black one is the liquid electrolyte. This red one is the only with uh, fast lithium salt. Blue one is the with the uh, fast PEG. Okay, with the fast PEG plus Okay, so compared with the liquid electrolyte also, the fast PEG based volume electrolyte. Having very good specific capacity. Okay, this is the uh, What are the uh, conclusion? That is, after adding this fast based nano components that increase the conductivity, mechanical strength, thermal stability, flame resistance, and reduces PG crystallinity and enhances the electrochemical properties of lithium. And finally, this fast based polymer is a good choice as separatory lithium anode. But with ionic it is only one problem that is mechanical stability. Okay, that is very good. Otherwise, the ionic liquid based polymer electrolyte is also very good. But that we can uh, rectify by using the, this fast based ionic liquid. And what are the challenges maintained? Challenges are safety only. Because even we are using fast based materials, these are lithium ion batteries. These are lithium, lithium batteries only. Lithium is uh, not friendly with atmosphere, that is highly reactive to open atmosphere. Okay, we need to take more. Okay, as challenge point of view, even we are increasing the safety, we are increasing the safety, still the lithium are uh, highly reactive in open atmosphere. Second thing, we need to improve the capacity, whatever that 190, 200, 250, that is not enough at present requirement point of view, in future requirement point of view. In future requirement point of view, we need to increase that specific capacity more than 500. That is very, very important. At present, commercially, we have maximum 270 in lithium ion. I am very thankful to my PhD supervisor, Dr. Manmeet Kumar, and he is always helping me. And my postdoc supervisor, Professor Jeevuri, 
maximum I implement that whatever I explain. I did in my postdoctoral work and after that. And I am also very thankful to my present institution, that is BJRK Hyderabad, one of the premier institutions in Hyderabad. I am very thankful to those things. And thank you. Yeah. Any questions? You can ask. Thank you very much, sir, for your wonderful presentation on the rhythm and batteries. So now the session is open for the carry. Uh, there is one carry in this yeah, and question and answer that is pretty Tomer. Yes, sir. Which ionic liquid is used? Yeah, right, right. See, actually, yeah, in my work, I use EMIM TFS actually. Macro in my work. The ionic, but but the past nano ionic liquids, the work I am not going to present here because there is a public uh, that is under patent published, not granted it. That's why I am not going to publish that nano ionic liquid much. But uh, in other work, whatever ionic liquid used, that is EMIM TFS, maximum ionic liquids. Okay, this I, I use EMIM TFS. This I use in my work, and whatever I explain others' work, they have not used ionic liquid. They use plasticizer, that is polyethylene glycol dimethyl ether. But nano ionic liquids are not going to focus much. Any other question? Participant side, any other question? One, the Amita Saxena. Yeah, Amita. Then. Any other question? Yes, sir. Very good morning. Yeah, good, mo yeah, good morning, Amit, sir. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, sir. How about you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Okay, Presentation okay. was really very good. Yeah, thank it you. Sure that you did so many things on your uh, battery and parking. I have a very small uh, one question. Yeah, sure. Like in the most of the cases, you have shown uh, that. Uh, PEO based polymer. Yeah, exactly. And the conductivity is around minus five or minus four in order. Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, I suppose for the for the battery purpose, the conductivity is very low. Yeah, that needs more uh, practical issues. Minimum we need minus four other. Yeah. And uh, if it be minus three, it be more better. Yeah, if minus three is point. very, very good. Very minus, good. If, yeah. And uh, secondary is like if when we are dispersing the ionic liquid. Okay. Then most of the polymers are suffering with the uh, moisture problem. Exactly. Uh, then what is what is uh, uh, the method to overcome with this problem? See, the main thing is actually whatever uh, ionic liquids we are adding. If you if we add in open atmosphere, particularly whatever salts, even ionic liquid is also salt. Actually, ionic liquids having more moisture effect. If we had directly the ionic liquid, no doubt at all, moisture effect is there. Maximum for that, we need to use the dry conditions. Okay. Dry, dry conditions is actually in maximum places that is not available. Particularly, whatever we did in our work, whatever ionic liquid we added, that is completely inside the glow box we added, not outside. That means particularly dry conditions. Sir. That means in that atmosphere, we have to do. Is there any possibility to add some uh, metal uh, composition to reduce this uh, dependency of moisture? Like in some of the paper I go through, they are using some uh, metallic yeah. composition. Yeah, right. Some techniques they use it to remove the moisture. Some techniques, yeah, some techniques are there. Even if whatever polymer already we are synthesizing in our labs, okay, that even not lithium, even sodium also, that means that is having some moisture effect. Yes, because I am working on sodium, I am suffering with this problem. When yeah. I'm doing about 50 to 60 percent of sodium iodide, is is uh, highly depending on the moisture. Exactly. Actually, because of that, the water conductivity we are getting that is not genuine. Huh. So that is main problem we are facing in India due to lack of some facilities. With the same sodium, if you did that um, uh, electrolyte in glow box, we will get exact. Yes. So even that is even friendly with nature. Sodium is friendly with nature, but the sodium salt is not friendly with nature. That ions uh, that they attract moisture a little bit compared with lithium, that is a little bit attract. Mm -hmm. Even if you had ionic liquid, that will attract more. Oh. If we, we can remove by using different techniques, but uh, it's not uh, suggestible. Actually, those techniques are not the suggestible. Better we need to synthesize in dry conditions, I mean, that is in an atmosphere conditions, if we have. Otherwise, uh, we can go for this. 
Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, sir. Any other questions from Marish? Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. So, there is no more questions. Okay. Yes, sir. I request the coordinator of the FDQ, Dr. Amit Sakhena, sir, to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, uh, Dr. Yeah, uh, I'm very thankful to Manji, sir, for accepting my request to present a talk. So it's very busy schedule as we all knew that uh, right now the academic sessions are going on and uh, most of us are engaged in a number of classes now. But still he accepted the request and he presented a very wonderful talk on this. I think uh, this FDP will really ignite the others to do work on polymer because they are more to do with polymer electrolytes. So it is uh, around 100 years on this, but still polymer electrolytes have that uh, advantage and their space to work over. So thank you, thank you very much. On behalf of Shri Vishnu Vidya and uh, from the Department of Physics, I would put my heartless uh, thank you to Dr. Anji Reddy Polu. And I am thankful to all my participants and the technical team, Dr. Nidhu Pariya, Dr. Pradya Palod, for continuously supporting me to conduct and to make it successful. Thank you, thank you very much. We'll meet in the next session. Thank, thank you, you, Anji, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all. The next session will start at sharp 2.30 p.m. So all the participants are requested to join the session on time. Thank you very much.